Today I'm showing you the ultimate clean and compact espresso station. Welcome back to the channel. My name is Chris and I make videos about coffee. Okay, so this is my ultimate clean and compact espresso station with a matte white theme, which came in at a total of about $1,700. All products featured in this video will be available in the description down for you to check out. And I'll also leave some budget or luxury counterparts for those of you who want to save a little bit of money or those of you who might want some upgrades. Okay, so the entire station is sitting on the IKEA Bacant storage unit with two legs in the front and two casters in the back so I can move it around for filming purposes. A note about this is that I intentionally picked something that's quite tall at 40 inches because I am filming with it. I would suggest that if you were to create a similar setup at home to use something that's a little bit shorter and better for your tamping angle. So the build quality of the storage unit is solid with lots of metal, especially for an IKEA furniture piece. It features a nice soft closed drawer in a light wooden color and it does have an adjustable height shelf underneath. I don't keep anything worth mentioning in the bottom drawer at the moment, except for some things for future videos. But above that, I've got some decorative coffee bean packages, as well as some syrups for flavored drinks, alongside my instant camera that I'll occasionally use to snap a photo of a latte or two. The next shelf above that is where I've got my fake IKEA plant, of course, as well as the cups I'm using for this coffee station, which is the Not Neutral Mino line, which is essentially the Lino series I used to have way back with my original Gaja Classic Pro setup videos, but without the handle. I also keep the Fellow Atmos container for my bean storage, and I didn't want to buy a second one just for this video, so I'm using the clear one that's usually at my Rocket Apartamento station, but they do have an all matte white version as well. Now moving on to the main and top portion of the setup, this build was designed with compactness in mind, taking up less than just two square feet of space or half a square meter. And so instead of using a normal knockbox, I'm using this knockbox drawer from Joe Frex, which perfectly fits the dimensions of a grinder like the one I'm using here, which is the Eureka Mignon Silencio in a white finish. You'll see here that I also have a white bar mat that's been cut to size with white perforated shelf liner to dampen some of the vibrations. To further save on space, I also keep a silver distributor and tamper combo, which perfectly sits at the base of the grinder like the one I'm using here. Originally, I wanted to get this all white one that I found online, but... So I picked up this silver one instead for about 40 bucks. And now on to the machine itself, the Gaja Classic Pro. This is the machine that I started my channel with, and even up to now, a lot of those older videos have been some of my most popular to date. So finally, the Gaja is back in an all new, all matte white finish to complete the whole aesthetic. So on top of the Gaja, I've got a sheet of white perforated shelf liner cut to size, much like the one I keep on top of my Rocket Apartamento. And this is where I store the $12 espresso scale that I literally talk nonstop about on this channel, as well as a shot glass for dosing. Now that I've gone through everything here, let's talk about exactly how much this setup costs and where you can choose to make some upgrades or save a little bit of money. First, the storage unit itself. The IKEA Bacant is a little bit pricey at $200 and I personally don't recommend it mostly due to the height. This happens to be perfect for my needs because it fits the dimensions I wanted and has a nice tall height for filming. A good alternative here might be the IKEA Billy bookcase, which should fit this setup, although with less wiggle room and is also just 20 bucks. Do keep in mind though, IKEA does say that it has to be secured to the wall. So the machine and grinder here are $500 each for a total of $1,000. Obviously the choice is yours, and this is a great entry level setup into the world of espresso in my opinion, but with the grinder from Eureka, they do have cheaper options and they do have more expensive ones, like the very popular Specialita. Although in my opinion, if you were gonna go for something like the Specialita, you might as well get something like the Niche Zero, which is also always a great option. I also have a custom upgraded portafilter and a Barista Pro Nanotech basket, which was about another 90 bucks. To maintain compactness, I couldn't find anything like the Joe Frex drawer knockbox, which is a little bit pricey at $100, but saves so much space compared to having a dedicated separate knockbox on the side. So to save a little bit of money here, you would probably need a little bit of a bigger storage unit or counter or bar, and you can use a cheap separate knockbox, much like the one I used to use in my Rocket Apartamento setup. Again, links to everything will be down below. 
For the pitcher of choice, I wanted the Slow Pour Supply Pitcher, which came in at $45 after shipping. Again, there are cheaper options here that you can get from Amazon, but after using this pitcher compared to maybe my three or four other pitchers, it really just might be my new favorite. I really like the feel in the hand, and I found that I was able to get much better and consistent latte art with it over the last week or so that I've had it. For a premium alternative, you could go with a pitcher like the Jibby Jug, which could easily run you over 100 bucks, or a Moda pitcher from Amazon for under $30 for a budget option. The temper distributor combo here of choice is this silver one I managed to find on Amazon that combines the two functions for $40. And like I mentioned before, I did find an all white one, but it was pretty pricey at 200 bucks. You could pick that one up to better match this whole aesthetic and it probably functions and performs a little bit better, but I think the silver color does work here too. So for the glassware, or should I say ceramic wear of choice, I'm using the not neutral Mino, which like I mentioned before is like the Lino series I used to use, but without the handles. These cups are great for pouring latte art because of the nice wide diameter and and of course fit the all white aesthetic. These came in at $60 for four cups and four saucers. And finally, you've got the fellow Atmos, which comes in at around $35 for the largest size. And that is really it for the bulk of this setup. The rest of the items I have are decorative pieces, which can be entirely up to you to choose. Again, everything here is listed in the description down below for you to check out. Now, before I want to end this video, I just want to say a huge thanks to all of you for supporting this channel. And it's because of your support that I've been able to reinvest into the channel and bring back a setup like this to make videos about. So make sure you're subscribed because I do have plenty of videos planned around this very popular budget setup. Once again, thanks for watching. Don't forget to leave a like and comment below about what you want to see with this setup in the future. And I will see you in the next one.